big fans of the Harry Potter universe, so whenever a new film is coming out, we always use it as an excuse to do another effect from the franchise, like the spell casting effect or the moving portrait effect we did recently. This time around, we are taking a look at the invisibility cloak from the films, and this time we are not doing it in After Effects, but Black Magic's fusion. So to dive right into it, the first thing we did was grab our footage, which we shot very simply with no gear right next to our studio, and just had Emily throw a green screen on herself and against grass and trees just to make it a little bit more challenging because why not? Don't Future. And this effect was done by our friend Zeke Faust, who is a very talented VFX artist, so check the notes below to see more of his work and where you can find him online. And again, we're using Fusion, and specifically Fusion Studio, but all of the steps will work exactly the same in the Fusion module inside of Resolve, including both the free and paid version. So even if you don't have Resolve, you can go get the free version and follow along. But with our footage shot, we're gonna bring that in and the clean plate that we got into the nodes panel, we can select the node and press 1 to view it in viewer 1 or just drag it into the viewer we want. And we'll start by keying our fabric. Now our footage contains all of that green in the background, which of course conflicts with the green screen, so first we're going to need to color correct to separate that. Pressing shift and space brings up the search bar where we can type in which effects we want to add. We'll add a color corrector and increase the saturation to 2, then we'll slowly drag the hue slider until the hue of the grass separates from from our green screen. And if you need to, you can hold down control while dragging a slider to reduce the increments and be more precise. Now we'll add a delta keyer and plug in our corrected footage. Now we'll click and drag the eyedropper onto an area of green. Holding control allows us to sample from a larger area as well. Now press A in the viewer to see the alpha channel, then go to the matte tab and adjust the low and high threshold to remove the semi-transparent pixels. Then adjust the clean foreground and clean background sliders, as well as the blur, restore fringe, and erode to further clean our map. Pressing A again, we'll return to our color view, and finally, we'll change the view mode to intermediate result. Now we want to mat our footage, but we don't want to use our saturation and hue adjustments that we created for the key. So we'll create a matte control and plug our raw footage into the background input, and our delta keyer into the gray garbage matte input. Make sure the garbage matte is set to invert, and we can rename the node key. We also want to make an inverted matte, so plug our delta Delta here into another matte control node and make sure invert matte and post multiply image are checked. And we can rename this matte control node to inverted key. To stay organized, we will hold alt while dragging on the wire to reroute our connection, then move the inverted key over. Now that we have our key, we need to prepare our clean plate. We'll open the keyframe tab and drag our clean plate footage in until it covers the duration that we want the effect to take place. Since this clean plate will be our background, we'll need new empty frames to cover the missing first half of the clip. This is because Fusion doesn't allow background inputs to have non-existent frames. Now create a background node and make sure the resolution matches our footage, then merge the clean plate on top of this background. You can add a merge node with the search bar or you can drag the output of one node onto the output of another to create one automatically. And make sure the clean plate is in the green foreground input. And now we can start tracking. And our footage is handheld and moving in space while our clean plate is stationary but handheld. So we'll need to stabilize our clean plate first, then match the parallax from the original footage. So create a tracker node and add at least two points so that we can track position and rotation. Then choose two areas of contrast and track forward through the duration of the effect. Now create a transform node after our clean plate merge. Right click the center parameter and choose connect to, tracker one, steady position, and do the same for angle. Now that our plate has been stabilized, we need to match the position of our original footage. So go to the last frame and create a temporary merge node, then plug in the footage and the stabilized clean plate. Decrease the blend to see both at once, create another transform node and put it after stabilization, then adjust this transform's position, scale, and angle until it lines up with the original footage. And we can delete this merge node when finished. We do have more to do with this track, but before I do, I do want to thank today's sponsor, Motion Array. And Motion Array is a lot of things all in one. The most obvious thing is their massive library of assets like video templates, stock footage, photos, music, and sound effects. Like if we dive into the template area here, you can sort by After Effects, Premiere, Resolve, Final Cut, and more. And you have these great fully built out templates that you can get in and customize for your own projects.
project. And you can filter down to find exactly what you need here, like looking just for lower thirds, for example. And you'll find everything from nice, clean corporate looks to more fun and creative ideas. Then you have presets for all kinds of different effects, like color filters, light leaks, and glitches. Of course, we could search through all of this on the site easily enough, but they also have a great extension panel for Premiere and After Effects. With this, you get a motion array panel right inside of Premiere that has all of their assets in it. So you don't need to open your browser at all. You shift through everything right here easily, try things out until you find the right one, then download and import right there. And while that side of it is great, there's more that they've added in to make Motion Array incredibly cool. First are their plugins. This is a bunch of transitions and effects to use inside of Premiere. You download and install and find them in your effects folder. Then you can just drag on one of the many transition effects. Then you have something that I wouldn't expect, a great collaboration tool that comes with the subscription. You can upload your work here to send and receive notes when doing remote work. And another thing I did not expect and haven't really heard anybody talk about is their site builder and a really solid one. Inside of their portfolio builder here, you can make your own site to show off your work and use a custom URL to make it fully yours and pro. They have a little bit of almost everything. I half expect it to make me coffee somehow too. For subscriptions, you have annual, which saves you some cash or monthly so that you can grab it when you need and cancel after that. And these are all universal licenses that cover you for however you need to use it. So definitely jump into the notes and check this one out. It comes with a massive range of benefits. Logo. But jumping back in from where we left off, the next thing we need to do is match the parallax of our shot with the clean plate. In our case, we have two main surfaces, the background trees and the ground. So we'll create two planar trackers named background track and ground track, and we'll plug the footage plate into both. Now we need to create a rough mask for Emily so her movement doesn't interfere with the tracker. We'll add a polygon node and draw a rough garbage mat. Keyframes will be enabled automatically for this node. So move through the timeline and adjust it so that it covers her for the duration of the effect. We'll also create another mask for her shadow and place that in after our first one, then plug this into the occlusion mask input. You can hold down alt when you let go of the mouse to see a list of available inputs. Now in the background planar tracker node, we'll want to move to the last frame and click set on our reference time. This is because we aligned our footage and our clean plate on the last frame. So we'll need to planar track from the last frame as well. We'll also adjust our work area so it only tracks for the duration of our effect. So draw a large shape around the background and click track backward. When it's finished, click create planar transform and this will create a planar transform node linked with the track data, which we will put after our clean plate. Next, we're gonna need to create a matte control and a polygon node. Drop the matte control directly between the clean plate and the planar transform. You can hold down shift while dragging a node to drop it in between an existing connection. Then plug the polygon into the garbage mat, making sure to click invert so the alpha is reversed. We'll draw a large shape that will cover the entire background behind the cloak, then add a bit of a soft edge. We'll do the exact same process again, but track the ground instead of the trees this time. And now we have two patches of our clean plate that we can merge together to create an overall clean plate that matches our parallax perfectly. And with that in place, we can now start displacing the background. To do that, we will create a displace node after the combined clean plate and plug the cloak inverted key into the second input. You can already see that adjusting the refraction strength gives us an effect, but we don't want it to change the scale. So switch the displacement mode from radial to XY. Then increase the X and Y values until you see a result. Currently, we're using the red and green values of the footage to drive the X and Y displacement. But since our screen is almost entirely green, this won't produce an even result. So we'll add a create bump map node and plug it in between the inverted key and the displacement. You can see that this essentially turns our footage into a normal map texture. Increasing the spread in the displacement node will remove some of those ugly micro distortions that we get from the sensor noise. When we adjust the displacement, you can see the background move out of position. We can fix this by changing the X and Y offset in the displacement to negative 0.5. Next, we'll create the ghostly white fall off around the edges of our cloak. Start by adding a color corrector and desaturate our inverted cloak key, as well as adding the gamma and gain. When we do this, we'll get a dark fringe around our edges. To fix it, go into the options of the color corrector and check pre-divide slash post multiply. Now we'll create a merge node before a displacement and plug the color corrector into the foreground input. We can adjust the alpha gain and the blend until we get a nice effect. Next, we'll create a matte control and blur 
blur node both after the color corrector and we'll increase the blur amount to about 120, then plug this into the garbage mat input of the mat control. If we view this by itself, we can see the effect by looking at the alpha, which is a faded edge around our cloak. Now that we have our cloak effect created, we need to bring back our original shot with the green removed. Merge the keyed footage on top of the displaced clean plate. Now our clean plate with distortion is showing through the keyed footage. To make the cloak fully disappear, we could simply animate our X and Y displacement to zero, but we want ours to disappear from top to bottom. So create a rectangle mask, giving it a healthy amount of soft edge and make sure invert is checked. Then plug it into the inverted key garbage mat input and make sure the garbage mat itself is also set to invert. We'll move the rectangle mask above the comp enable keyframing for the center and animate it to descend over the time of the disappearance. Now, if you look at our create bump map node, you'll see that the bump map disappears from top to bottom. As an added detail, we wanna make the shadow disappear with the cloak. To do this, we'll copy and paste our ground planar transform along with its matte control and polygon mask, then plug in the stabilized clean plate. We'll create a new merge to put it over our displacement and key merge nodes, then view the output. We need to keyframe our polygon mask to cover the area of the shadow as they get obscured by the cloak. In our case, the shadow patch was covering some of the displacement. To fix this, we'll simply plug our original key into the blue mask input. Finally, we need to introduce the motion blur that should be present from the displacement. So we'll create an optical flow node after everything, then a vector motion blur after that. And we only want motion blur in the area of the cloak. So once again, we'll plug our original key into the mask input, this time inverting the mask in the vector motion blur settings. To smooth the edges, we can add an erode node to the mask, setting it to Gaussian and reducing the value until the edge of the key gets a good amount of feather. Once this is done, we have our effect. And of course, there are more things that you could do with this effect. If you want to create a chromatic aberration look, duplicate your displace node three times, plugging the displacement map into each. Then in the settings, uncheck the channels so that each node only affects a single channel, R, G, and B. Then adjust the displacement amount on each node until you get an RGB split effect. If you want a subtle diffusion effect, you can add a very blurred node before the displacement and use the inverted key as a blur map. It really is a versatile technique which can be used for all sorts of effects like a sci-fi cloaking device, heat distortion, refractive liquid, glass, and more. And if you're an After Effects user like I am or other layer-based compositor, it is worth noting that we'd be working with a whole lot of pre-comps at this point. While in node-based compositing, every node can be broken out into its own tree. So in a sense, every single effect is its own pre-comp. This means that we can use any node for multiple purposes without having to duplicate it or lose our procedural setup. But that's it for today. Again, check out Zeke's stuff in the notes below and we'll add some more fusion goodies down there as well. And until next time, don't forget to write, shoot, edit, repeat.